Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're reviewing for you Pepper Grinder on the Nintendo Switch. This review was originally written by the wonderful Mitch Vogel and has been adapted for video by me. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. <laughs> Way back in the ancient days when the Game Boy Advance was Nintendo's main handheld, Game Freak, yes, the Pokemon people, released a creative little platformer called Drill Dozer. Placing you in the role of a slightly crazed girl who tears through stages and foes alike with a powerful drill, it quickly established itself as an all-time classic with its unique take on platforming, though never becoming truly popular enough to justify a sequel. Now, nearly 20 years later, an indie developer named R. Eck decided to make Pepper Grinder a sort of spiritual successor. Carrying on the spirit of platformers of yesteryear while bringing in a ton of great new ideas of its own, Pepper Grinder stands out as an excellent new entry in the genre and one that we'd very much suggest you consider picking up. The story takes place in a world of islands where piracy runs rampant. You play as a quiet adventurer named Pepper who amasses her pile of booty not by taking it from others, but by discovering it in various ancient caches. During a storm, Pepper's beach is wrecked on a beach and are overrun by these goofy narwhal-like creatures called gnarlings who raid her ship while she's passed out and steal all her treasure, the sods. When Pepper comes to, she soon discovers a mysterious drill device called Grinder and sets out on a vengeful quest to destroy the Gnarlings and reclaim her riches. Pepper Grinder is a classic 2D platformer through and through, taking you on a linear journey through levels stretched across various themed worlds. Though unlike most platformers, jumping isn't emphasized nearly as much here. Most of the focus is placed on the chaotic might of Grinder and its ability to bore through almost anything. There's a frantic glee to Pepper Grinder's gameplay that we've rarely experienced in other platformers, and much of which has to do with its reliance on razor-sharp reflexes. A little bit like the classic Sonic games, level designs are often defined by sections of blazing fast speed interspersed among slower-paced sections where you're meant to catch your breath. Yet when it's time to go, Pepper Grinder isn't the kind of game that gives you very much time to calculate proper timing. As soon as you go underground, the accelerator is flawed and you're blitzing forward whether you want to or not, only leaving just enough time to react to the obstacles you're hurtling towards. It's a testament to Pepper Grinder's excellent controls that the overall experience is so enjoyable, as much of your time is spent hanging on for dear life. For one thing, the controls are very simple to come to grips with. You simply hold down ZR to spin the drill up and then you can juice the engine by tapping B for a bit, you'll get a sudden burst of speed that's great for nailing those jumps between pits. Meanwhile, the physics are as responsive and tight as you'd expect for a high-intensity platformer, and while you never feel like you're totally in control of the wild drill, there's a sense that you have just enough to always point it where you want to go. Top-notch level design is a highlight of Pepper Grinder, and this goes a long way towards making it such a unique and enjoyable experience. Every level introduces some new stage gimmick, such as an early level based around Donkey Kong country-style barrel blasts, or another where you can turn your drill into a minigun with infinite ammo, and this wealth of ideas gives Pepper Grinder wonderful variety. Yet no matter what the new flavor is, there's always a careful balance between exploration and action, lending each stage a great pace that doesn't feel too fast or too slow. To add more replay value, there are plenty of collectibles and additional challenges to overcome if you think your skills are sharp enough. Every stage has five hidden skull coins that you can use to buy materials in a shop like a cosmetic outfit for Pepper, or indeed keys that unlock hidden levels, while you can spend all the treasure you grab from the stages on a gacha that'll give you stickers for use in a photo mode, or temporary health boosts that'll boost up your maximum HP. Additionally, beating each stage once will unlock a time attack mode that has some tough requirements for getting a gold medal, demanding mastery of both a stage layout and grinder's movement mechanics. Visually, Pepper Grinder takes a lot after the high-bit art style seen in games such as the Mage Seeker, One Stop from Eden, or Grapple Dog, and it looks in all the best ways like a lost G GBA game. Bright colors just pop in every stage, especially when there's an explosion of treasure from another gnarling you wasted with the grinder, but it's the little details and animations that really take this visual style from good to great. Things like dynamic camera zoom when you deliver the final blow to a boss, or the way in which the menu UI twitches and vibrates adds that little bit of extra character and manic energy which helps Pepper Grinder stand out from its peers. It also features a standout soundtrack that perfectly matches the bristling energy and inventiveness of the gameplay with an 
eclectic music lineup that throws loads of cool ideas your way. Featuring elements of drum and bass, house, pop, jazz and funk and many, many others, it all combines into something that feels surprisingly cohesive considering the range. You simply never know what kind of music might play in the next stage, yet it always feels like a great fit for the action on screen. The only real and rather minor complaint we have about Pepper Grinder is that there simply isn't enough of it. It should only take you about four to six hours to beat, and maybe a few more if you collect everything and nail the gold times in the time attack. Now, of course, it's always better for a game to go out on a high note than overstay its welcome, but with the wealth of ideas and excellent gameplay here, we couldn't help but wish there was just another world or two to flesh it out. We encountered some minor technical issues in the review build as well, including a glitch during the final boss fight that made the boss invincible, which isn't ideal. However, overall, they didn't amount to much more than minor annoyances, and we've been assured that a patch to smooth out these issues is already in the works for release shortly after launch. Pepper Grinder is a wonderfully inventive and fun platformer that no fan of the genre will want to miss out on. It may have a runtime that feels a little bit short, but this is ultimately a deeply enjoyable, challenging, and highly replayable game with loads of personality. If you think you'd be interested, we'd suggest you pick up Pepper Grinder at the nearest opportunity, and if you're still in two minds, there's even a downloadable demo if you're on the fence. So go and play that at the least. You've reached the end of the review. That means it's time for Alex's personal thoughts. And I, I love this game. It demands a lot, but the rewards are so sumptuous. The jumps you have to perform when you leave a drillable area are largely very forgivable, and certainly when it comes to just standard progress. But if you're trying to get any of the like secrets and things like that, they can be really tough, and not in a way where, you know, sort of you got to go at maximum speed or anything like that, although there is a, a little bit of that. It's mainly about your trajectory. Once you burst out of a drillable surface, you have almost no control over your trajectory. I mean, you have a little bit, although that's mainly once the trajectory is kind of starting to end, but it means that a lot of the time, if you're trying to do something very specific, you've got to be very specific to begin with, and considering you've got 360 degrees of rotation, Rotation, that can be flipping hard, but when you get it, oh, when you get it, mwah, mwah. The secrets you have to find can also be really, really tough to track down. And that's not because they're deeply hidden or anything like that, or you have to do some bizarre thing to get to them. No, usually the signs are kind of in plain view, but you're moving so quickly, you have to keep your attention so firmly on Pepper and Grinder that you, you just, you're just you just going to pass them by a lot of the time. And that's kind of cool. It gives you a chance to go back and, you know, try and find them again, maybe take your time a little bit more when you're more familiar. I don't know. It, it just works really well. It's a really nice balance. Sometimes you'll go through a level and you'll get all of them, no problem. And sometimes you'll go... Why have I just found the fourth one and none of the others before? I particularly like the unlockable stages. They're usually just marked with an A, you know, sort of very Yoshi's Island style. I mean, to be honest, this whole game, certainly the overworld, really feels very Yoshi's Island, and that is no bad thing. It always leans heavily into a gimmick, and whilst the other stages are arguably definitely more balanced overall, there's something just weirdly fun about going through with some bizarre mechanic. It's just, it's just great fun. If you enjoy platformers like this at all, I'd be very surprised if you were disappointed by this. And as we said in the main review, there's a demo. Just download that, play that, then probably end up buying the real thing. It's not hard.